do a long intro so we can get it shared. All right. So we are live on Facebook yet again. We are live every Monday at 2 p.m. to share with you guys just what's going on in the market right now. Everybody's everybody knows about what's about COVID. Obviously, everybody that's on top of everybody's minds right now. But the real estate market right now is crazy. It's it's very it's very booming. It's on fire. I've said in past weeks. So we do go live every Monday with local realtors and local experts. We're going to tell you about what's just going on. And this week we're going to do it a little bit different since we did have some um, last minute people who couldn't make it on. And we have some, we have the fabulous Katie Bourgeois and Sarah Crombie who are both local professionals who have been in the real estate industry for a very long time and they know their stuff. So I'm going, they've also been on this Market Update Monday since the beginning when Corona first started. So I really appreciate you guys being on every week. And I'm going to actually take this time since there's only two of you guys this week and we're going to pick their brains a little bit just about like the seller side of things and the real estate market. So get ready. I'm going to pick your brains and I'm excited for this week. So um, really quick, I just want you guys to introduce yourselves and tell us, like, obviously the company you work for, but, like, tell us how you got into real estate in general so that people who are watching right now have an idea of, like, the knowledge that you guys really, truly have in our market right now. Uh, Katie, if you want to start. All right. We're going in alphabetical order, I guess. <laughs> yeah. so, my name is Katie Bourgeois. I am broker owner of Bourgeois Real Estate Group, and we're located here in Palm City. I'm a third generation real estate broker. I've been in the business for over nine years. And, um, you know, we, we love working with buyers and sellers, uh, mainly residential, but we do dabble in commercial up and down US 1 and into Fort Pierce specifically right now. Um, I'll, we have a, a team of 14 agents in our office. And we cover the uh, North Palm Beach, Martin, St. Lucie, and Indian River counties. And we do go out to Okeechobee occasion. I do have uh, some family members out there I'm familiar with uh, Okeechobee County as well. So um, I actually started in real estate um, basically with my mom. Um, and I'm good. I, I kind of say that sarcastically because I was hosting open houses and handing out cookies since I can remember. And I was answering the, the, the office phone on the weekends and summers and doing the key log when people actually had to come to the office and get the key and sign out for it uh, way back in the day before there were cell phones at, at, in everyone's pocket. So I've been around the, the professional real estate industry for a long time. And then of course, went to college, came out of college, started working some jobs, found my way into my stepdad's law office as his uh, title agent and business development uh, for his title business and uh, did closings and, and brought in the biz and then uh, skedaddled for a little while, was going to go to law school, decided um, that when I saw the market tank, uh, that uh, that probably wasn't a good idea to go get a bunch of debt uh, in the, the dark days of uh, when the, the dark days of real estate began. So I began as a real estate practitioner in uh, 2010, 2010, 2011, and uh, you know, those were the, those were tough years. Those were, you know, short sales of foreclosures. So I really uh, earned some thick skin uh, early in my real estate career. And, you know, the, I can, bringing new agents into the business constantly, you know, I'm seeing the same struggles 10 years ago happening now. Um, and, you know, I, I think I, the biggest um, benefit maybe to working in real estate and having a, a smooth career in real estate, not only working your tail off um, constantly and, and surrounding yourself with great information, but also um, having relationships in, in uh, real estate with other realtors and industry professionals. So you create this really awesome team of people, not only within your brokerage, but also outside um, business partners or industry uh, professionals like title people, Lucy, like uh, inspectors, um, insurance folks, mortgage lenders, um, at all types, uh, roofers, electricians, plumbers, all that stuff. Uh, so I, we, we like to call ourselves the source of resources. Uh, so, you know, you can always call on us. We've got people all over the place to do anything. And if we don't know someone, we probably do know someone who knows someone. <laughs> that is how it works. <laughs> That's crazy. And especially in the small little town that we're in, it's like everybody knows everybody. Like there's 
it's 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 crazy how connected it is here locally. And I probably um, went to high school with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or that's elementary true. school, or I know, you know, their parents or something. Yeah, that's true. There's a many times that I've run into people and it's like, oh, you know, whether I've gone to school with them or their parents, like I went to school with their kids. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's so connected here. So Sarah, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into business. Well, I have an interesting story. It kind of happened over time, um, but I've always had a passion for design and a pretty good knowledge of construction just from my upbringing. Um, I did go for a design degree first out of high school and then went on to get a business degree and worked in investment management in Boston for 15 years. But I never gave up my love for design and actually had thought about getting my real estate license back when I was in college, but I was working two jobs and trying to get straight A. So it, it really didn't happen back then. But it, it was always something in the back of my mind. And I always helped friends find homes. And my husband, all of his bachelor friends that were buying homes and fixing them up back when we were kids, um, I would help them decorate those homes and make design choices. So it was always a hobby of mine for sure. Um, when, I, when we moved, um, well, when I worked in corporate America, there's a couple things that happened. And Katie, you can agree with this working for your dad and your mom. You develop a very strong work ethic, and I think that's the type of person that you have to be to survive in this business. You have to be a self-starter. You have to have a very strong work ethic. You have to get up every day and work in the business. You really have to love it to do that. Um, but for me, um, when I worked in corporate America, it just um, happened that I was in charge of investor relations. I wrote press releases. I did the marketing. I did a lot of different things for my company, and I had a really good working knowledge of finance. And I did talk to the analysts on the phone when we were reporting. We were publicly traded. We reported quarterly and, and um, quarterly earnings, and we were a mutual fund house, and we had billions of dollars in assets under management. So I learned to talk to people and never be intimidated by the person I was talking to. And, um, and then the other piece of it was the design degree, um, coupled with growing up on the water with a boat in my backyard. So I know a lot about coastal living and a lot about boating. And, fa you know, fast forward a million years later, here are my customers. They're boaters or investment people from up north. They're buying property uh, as second homes. Um, I have to do a lot of my own marketing and design and know my way around, you know, computers and technology. So really, it was something that just sort of came together um, as a second chapter of my life. After my company was acquired and it was taken private in um, in Boston, I came down here to be a stay-at-home mom with the kids. And uh, one of my best friends was the realtor uh, who farmed this community, and she really had started up a website in the neighborhood directory and really started the business here in Palm Cove um, Golf and Yacht Club. So when it was time and the kids were old enough, I said, you know what? I, I And I thought about it for a while. What am I going to do in my second act? I'm going to do something I really love. I'm finally going to take the time to do real estate. It's something that comes naturally. And I love helping people find homes. And like Katie said, I had accumulated from the the property that we had, you know, flipped and remodeled over the years, a pocket full of really good contractors. And you have to be a one-stop shop when it comes to real estate. That's what sets you apart from the competition is, and especially when you're some of your customers, these are vacation homes. They're not even coming to town. They may have to remodel them. You have to be able to step up and help them get all that done in, um, in a way that they'd be satisfied. So when it was time for my second act, I approached my friend and I said, you know what, I want, I've always wanted to be a realtor. I want to come work with you. And she said, you know, it's funny you should say that. I'm actually leaving the area. I'm going to be moving back to be closer to family. You can have the business. So I, I was lucky enough to start out with listings, a website, a neighborhood directory, and the most awesome partner, Gail Sokoloff, my broker at the time, and, and and to date myself, Gail and Katie's mother were partners back in the day. And Gail remembers when Katie was born. <laughs> so, so we are all connected for <laughs> sure. 
Yeah, so That's I've true. had the most amazing mentor in Gail and also in Beverly. And what a generous and kind person to let me take over her business like that. And, you know, the neighbors in here, one by one, they started to trust me. I started with the smaller properties and I worked my up, way up till I could get an estate listing. Then I worked my way up to the riverfront section. And all along the way, it was someone just giving me, um, just throwing some trust my way and watching me, um, you know, and, and watching my success successes and giving me a chance. So, um, you know, Gail, it was always the plan that I would take over New Wave Realty when Gail was ready to, you know, step back a little bit, spend more time with her family, which by the way, she still hasn't done three years in uh, as broker. She's busier than I am some days. So, um, but I had an amazing mentor. And then, you know, a few years ago, I, the kids are now grown and off. Um, on their own. Uh, so it was time for me to step up and become broker. So it's been a labor of love over the years. Nothing came easily, only maybe my very begin, my very first start, but I really had to prove myself to keep that going. And um, just, you know, I always say the harder you work, the luckier you get. And I, it was just hard work and, and getting your name out there. You know, when you're a small boutique firm like we are, it's really important that you get some name recognition and some trust built up. Because remember, we don't have those big powerhouse marketing teams behind us. Um, so we've really done it one relationship at a time, one deal at a time. And um, I'm 10 years in now. This is my third year as the broker and owner of New Wave Realty. I'm proud to say that we have 10 agents working with us. And um, my success has always been in farming in an area that you know, being the expert in something, you know, being an expert in an area, the go-to person. And the agents that work with me, they do that with their communities and their areas. And we have agents from Port St. Louis and we do business all the way down through probably Palm Beach Gardens. And then we'll do referrals when we get out of our comfort zone. Um, we, we, we're all um, very friendly with each other. We have good working relationships with other realtors. So um, basically that's how it happened for me. I've never looked back. I absolutely love what I do. I get up every single day excited with a new idea. Um, of something we could do, um, especially now when we're trying to ride out such an unusual market. So that's my story. Love that. And you know, I I learned little tidbits here that I didn't even know. So it's so it's so crazy to hear like the stories. I mean, everybody has a story, right? And how how real estate is all connected. I mean, I would have never expected to be in the real estate industry myself. And I was kind of like knowing the just the connections I, I got my job through a connection and I've met so many incredible people like you guys themselves and just like hearing the inspiration I, you guys are amazing I just I can't say thank you how you lucky are we that we I always say we get to we get to wake up every day and do a job we truly love I mean we are lucky absolutely, absolutely. yeah absolutely so, you know, you talked about the crazy market that we're in right now so that's going to lead me into you know let's talk about what are some things with sellers right now? Because this call is kind of, you know, we go over listings, which we will in a little bit. If you guys are watching right now, we're going to go over some of the listings that Katie and Sarah has. But what are some concerns that you guys are seeing that sellers are having right now? And maybe, you know, what should they expect when they're going into, if they are prepared to sell their house right now? So you, either one of you can start. Well, I can, I can say, you know, maybe just from the, you know, my little piece of the world, I, I can't speak for every seller out there. I can only speak to the experiences and conversations that I have had personally. Um, the, the sellers that we're talking to are motivated and those sellers that are not quite ready, we kind of put them on, you know, we, we, we feed them information and it's up to them to make the decision. I'm never going to strong arm anyone into giving me the listing and really the, when we list a property, it's a partnership between that broker and agent and that seller or that family of individuals, um, whether it's an investment property or a, um, you know, a property that someone, a family or a couple is moving out of and into another property. Um, it's still a home to them, you know, uh, those people that are, they're not investors. So of course, every seller thinks that their house is phenomenal. They've lived there forever and all of their stuff is beautiful. Um, you know, we've got to go through the, the checklist and clean things up. And that's daunting in itself, having to put things away into storage or box everything up and uproot their lives. So that's usually the first step after the information stage. So I think that the most important thing probably that I would uh, like to continue to, to spread is 
for any seller that's interested or maybe teetering, asking questions and, and maybe getting motivated, um, please don't listen to the national news. The national news is not indicative of what's happening in your neighborhood. And like Sarah said, you know, ask a local expert. If it's not Sarah, if it's not Katie, if it isn't any of the people on this call, ask someone and keep asking until you get an answer that sounds like, you know, that, that might be the truth or, or, you know, get three, you know, you, you don't, um, you don't, you don't have the, the first $40,000 uh, roof provider, you know, uh, just go ahead and do it. You get three quotes, you know, you go ahead and, you know, work with good contractors and, and get an idea of what those big expenses might be. So why not ask two or three realtors for their opinion, not only of what's happening in the market, but also the value of their property and how many homes have they sold nearby and you know the the uh, information that they have on other properties that have sold in their neighborhood uh, if they didn't sell it they probably still know a lot about it um, you know they may have been in that property they may have been involved in negotiations at some point um, so for for sellers right now i think um, the most important thing would just be to to get connected with their their, their trusted real estate professional and uh you know just stay away from that national news, <laughs> even statewide news. It, it isn't really a, an indicator of what's happening specifically because, you know, our county, Palm Beach County and further south are having a totally different experience in yeah. general, you know, general health right now than the rest of the state. So we're a little, you know, we're, we're a little heavy on the on the cases right now. So things are a little different here than they would be, say, in the panhandle. So we, you know, drilling down to what the market value and, and the value that that realtor brings to uh, the partnership and listing and selling that property uh, is, is key. Absolutely. And Sarah? Well, thank you, Katie. You really did cover a lot of, um, and I had all kinds of ideas pop up while you were speaking about that. Um, there's certainly pockets of Martin County that are having issues, but they're pockets of the county. So, you know, I, the, when you watch the national news, I think they're just picking on Florida right now. And that's probably because of the uh, debate over when it's a good time to open. And of course, we're right on the fringe of deciding about school. So they're making us a case study for sure. Um, but here's what I'm seeing with sellers. Um, the people that are calling me to sell are calling me to sell because they are either A, they're trying to move closer to family. Maybe they've gone a long time now without being able to see their children or their grandchildren. And the whole gang's decided they want to live closer together. Um, because especially for someone who's down here and their family somewhere else, they may feel isolated over the last couple months. So those are the people that have made up their minds and they are going to live closer to family. Um, and then we have sellers that feel like, believe it or not, after the whole uh, couple years of downsizing, people are upsizing again. They're realizing that now they need more space and they need more outdoor space. But, you know, their own backyard, their own patio, their own swimming pool. They're not leaving the area. They're just trying to uh, make themselves a little more comfortable at home. Um, and many of them think maybe some something that's newer construction or, or lower maintenance um, may be better for them as well. Um, and then, you know, we also have the people who have decided to do remodeling projects right now. And I have to tell you, seven times or eight times out of 10, after someone remodels their whole, whole house, they wind up selling it for some reason. They think it's in its best shape and it's ready to roll. Um, but don't be afraid to call a realtor if you're thinking of just doing a home improvement project. We have really good information we can share with you on what um, improvements will bring you back the best return on your dollar, what improvements, um, you know, make sense and, and um, what your home could be worth after you do the improvements. So that's another reason to look to us as a local expert, um, even if you're not quite ready to sell now. Um, sellers challenges right now um, is where are they going to go? 
you know, I've got sellers who you know, were ready to list their homes and they're calling me and they're saying, you know what, I think we're going to stay here. You know, we feel safe. This has been a pretty good place to weather the storm. And, um, you know, we're looking around, we're realizing, you know what, there's nowhere we can think of that we want to be that's better than where we are right now. So I've had a couple listings go that way. Um, and of course, why would you want to start in a new area? How do you make friends and meet people you can't do it, go to the clubs or or the social events right now? And you really you're really not going to go outside and start talking to your neighbors during a weird time like this. So that's another reason. Now, I don't think those are they're permanently uh they haven't decided to permanently stay. I think those people are going to be calling us in a few months when things start to reopen again, and they can get more serious about um, where they're going. Um, so that's why we see a shortage of the inventory, and um, and it's really helped helped us to drive the market. To be honest with you, if anything, I see prices going up. And, you know, again, I always go back to the earlier uh, episodes of this where we predicted all this, right, Katie? And it's all happening. It's so nice to see it happening. And um, and it's not stopping people. The news is not stopping people from coming down. We are getting people from out of state that are buying houses here and they want to live here. Um, but I know today we're focusing on sellers, so I'll try to stay focused on that. Um, as far as people out there, because, Liz, you had asked about for sale by owner. There's there's a few reasons. Kate, am I jumping to the next question? Okay. That's okay. Go ahead. Jump. Really <laughs> that she'll, uh, she'll share with you the, the legal aspects of it. Um, but for me, it's always been a safety issue. You know, I wouldn't want to try and represent myself in a non-gated community, which is the only place really that you can be a successful for sale by owner, I believe, because you can't really use signage and and stuff like that in in, in most of the gated communities here. So, um, but if you're outside of a gated community and you want to throw up a lawn sign, um, you know, you have to be concerned about safety. The realtors, you know, we we. Um, we, we know where these people are coming from. We ask a lot of questions. We ask, um, in many cases, for them to provide pre-qualification before we ever do a first showing. I'm certainly doing it now because of COVID. Um, you know, we've kicked into pre-qual or proof of funds to close before we even open someone's house up um, to someone because we don't want anyone wasting our time. Um, you know, and sometimes those people disappear and then, you know, they weren't serious buyers. Um, but there's a lot of reasons. Um, uh, there are statistics that show that homes that are represented by an agent sell for 20 to 30 percent more than um, a first sale by owner. Um, you're going to get buyers that think they can lowball you because you're not being represented. You still have to hire a real estate attorney to represent you in terms of the contract. And, and um, you know, so there's a lot of things you have to do. Getting a buyer in a contract is, is really just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot that happens between contract and close. And there's a lot of, um, you know, hoop, hoops that you have to jump through and there's a lot of, um, you know, th hurdles that you have to get over. And, um, and when you're not represented, I think it can get very tricky. Um, there's a lot of emotions flying around too when you're negotiating directly with someone. It's nice to have an uh, intermediary who can negotiate on your behalf. Um, you know, so for, for all those reasons and more, and sellers, let me also tell you that people are very uncomfortable uh, looking at a house when the owner is standing there. They won't even look in the cabinets. They, they're afraid to touch anything. It's a very awkward situation. Um, I just don't think, I think you have a better chance um, of using an agent. So that's how I would um, approach a for sale by owner um situation uh there so absolutely you have anything to add to the for sale by owner thing Katie? oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um you know i i the the for sale by owner does not know what they don't know and we have the ability the skills the resources and most of us have the legal backing by making a phone call to legal counsel to make sure that certain things are done a certain way. Um, and we use contracts that are approved through the Florida Bar. Our Realtor Association, uh, Florida Realtors, has provided us with bulletproof contracts where 
everything is designed the way it's supposed to be. And there are, um, there are guidelines, timelines, and consequences for either party if they default. And there are provisions for default. So, you know, collecting a deposit, if you're a, uh, an unrepresented seller and you have found a buyer that maybe, you know, wants to give you a, a check and you go and hold on to that check, what are the legal implications of holding your own escrow? And, you know, not even just that. I mean, that's just a question, but long term, uh, they have no idea the disclosures that are required by Florida law. They don't work in this stuff every day. They don't know that they have to disclose that, yes, there is an old propane tank underground. Yes, you put it there. Yes, you have to disclose that. Um, and that could be, you know, a, a problem, a very big problem for them in the future if that uh, new owner of the property says, hey, you didn't tell me that there was a, a, a defunct propane tank in the ground. That is, that's a, that's a serious issue and it could cost you even more money, um, you know, on top to defend yourself, just basically. So, um, you know, we have the contracts, we have the resources, we have the the applied technical knowledge <laughs> to, get disclosures. From, yeah, to get from start to finish. And um, why not use the, the, the strongest real estate brand in the world, the realtor, to help educate you through the process and get you to the closing table, high fives and hugs, and, um, you know, keep you out of trouble. If anything, you know, I, we do have a, um, a for sale by owner packet. If I have a friend or family member that thinks they want to sell it, uh, sell a property on their own after my good laugh and, you know, hey, good luck with that. Here's a packet. You know, here's all the things that you need to do. And it's, it's, it's a big package. And after about a couple of minutes looking through that package, they say, oh, Katie, please help me. What do I, what do, I do? And, you know, they just don't, they don't understand the, the scope of, of, of uh, unknown that they're stepping into when um, they join us in the real estate, uh, you know, a, a, an unrepresented seller basically comes into the real estate world and they've got to deal with everything that we deal with on a regular basis one time. And they, you know, it, it can be done. But whoa, is it, it's daunting for most people that have jobs, families, you know, responsibilities. This is a full-time job. Absolutely. It's 1000, 1000% 1, what you said. I mean, it's Excellent. something that we're in every single day and it's understandable that it's a lot of information. That's why we started this market update Monday and we have the Thursday's top tips in real estate is because there's so much information in the real estate industry. And first of all, not one person knows everything. Like even though we're in it every single day, we don't know, not everyone knows everything. And, you know, but we have the resources to be able to find out those answers and not everybody has that if you're not in it every day. And it's, it's very important to have those professionals, a team of professionals behind you, helping you and guiding you in what's to come because there are so many moving parts. And when you first, when you're, you're just trying to buy a house and you know, there or sell a house, there's so many steps that are to come and you might easily skip over one and not even realize what you're doing. I mean, nobody intends to make a mistake, right? But that's what that's what we're here for. Um, so that was all really great information, guys. I, I love being able to pick you guys' brains and you guys are truly awesome. I think that we really truly live in a special community here. Um, Sarah mentioned families coming here and moving here because it's a desirable area. I am born and raised in Jensen Beach. So literally every single time I meet someone new, I'm like, hi, where are you from? Like, you know, like, are, are you from around here? And like, which is a weird question because like almost nobody's from here. <laughs> I know Katie, you are, but um, I, you know, it's so funny to like hear the, like people just say where they're from. And like, and then when, after I ask them where they're from, I say, how did, why did you move here? Why did you move here? Because I'm curious, like, did you just like pick on a map? Like, whoop, like that's where I want to go, which never happens. No, that's not the, that's not the answer. The answer is 
oh, I have a friend that lives here and I came to visit them once and oh my God, I just fell in love with the area and I just wanted to move here. Or, oh, I have friend, family that lives here or has lived here for a while and then I decided to come. And then it's like this domino effect of people that have come to this area. Cause I mean, I remember when I was born, like this area was not as booming it is, as it is now. And it's like, we're this special spot in Florida and we kind of have everything going on for us. We're not like this huge city like West Palm, which is just 30 minutes away, but we have the option to be able to get there. You know, we have that airport access right there. We have, you know, Orlando two hours away and Miami two hours away if you really want to get crazy. But like, you know, we've, we, and we got the beaches. Like there's so much in our area and it's being from here, it, it's always been interesting to me to ask people like why they come here. And we definitely have a lot of people coming here now especially with everything going on so something for everyone in this community we have yes. aviation we have boating we have equestrian we have all every single type of sport um every sort of of water sport uh you name it there's a club or a group in in you know in in, in normal yeah. life there's there's a group in a and a and there's something to do for every interest uh, in our area, which I think is is very unique. Absolutely. We're like the, the only thing we the only thing we don't have is mountains, which I'm a little upset about. We have Sugar Hill. We have Sugar Hill. <laughs> Sugar Hill. Savannah, Savannah Road over there. I'm about to go on a hike, guys. <laughs> <laughs> one hill in Jensen Beach. You should know about it. <laughs> oh, I do know about it. I do. It's like going on a roller coaster for oh, a minute or a second. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, you know, that is why Coastal Living Magazine has put us on their list, uh, top 10, and also Oprah Magazine last year. Um, was We were in the top six, I think, towns, small, charming towns you have to visit. Um, you know, so it's not by accident that they've um, they've found the same charm and, and uniqueness about the area that we have. And I also want to go on to mention the A-rated schools, um, you know, because people look into things like that and that's important to them and lower taxes than our surrounding counties. So you have, uh, you have it all really going on. Golf, we have world-class golf here right behind me. My background is the Floridian. It's a world-class golf golfing club um pretty impressive players over there um and there's lots of opportunity for that my daughter rode horses growing up and she was able to compete in wellington they come from around the world they do the winter equestrian festival there and they travel all the way from uh saratoga down for the winter festival these are olympic class world-class riders and she was able to compete in um one of their divisions down there while she was a child growing up. So you're right, Katie, there's boating, there's golfing, there's fishing, there's a lot of outdoor sports. It's a great, I, I felt like it was a great place to raise a family because it was, um, the weather is just beautiful, is just beautiful year round. Um, this is what struck me coming from New England and moving here. The sun shines every day here, and I never, ever get tired of the sky. The sky is so beautiful in Florida, and I don't know if that's because we don't have any mountains blocking the view, but you come over that Palm City Bridge, and it still brings a smile to my face every time I drive over it. We are so lucky to live here, you know? We really are, and there's so many things to do, especially now that we've been locked down we, we've really been taking um, advantage of all the wonderful things that we can do here um, and it's just uh, it's just a great place and I think there's always one friend there's always one customer who's the I call them the adventurer so they're the ones that do all the homework and they decide to move here and then all the friends follow the family comes the friends come and they always let that first one do the homework and figure it out so we do so i have my groups i have a connecticut group a new jersey group and this group that group they come in clusters um yeah that's funny so anyway it's fun so you really do build these really amazing relationships with um with your customers 
And that's why you got to know what you're doing because you're going to see them again. <laughs> you know, So you want to steer them in the right direction and you really want them to have the most positive experience, um, you know, when they use you as a realtor, because you will um, see them again and you'll see their friends and they will call on you in a few years when their lives change and they move to a different property or something like that. So it's kind of cool. Absolutely. And a lot of people's lives have changed due to this COVID-19 too, because now people, a lot of people are working from home and that's, I think another Two reason why guys. people are upset sizing because they realize they need yeah. an in-home office Yeah. or they need more space. They got kids they are using their kids' rooms for an office and they're like, I can't, I need my, they need their space. <laughs> well, how about this? You know, I talked about this early on. I thought it was just fascinating because I am into design and construction, how they were changing homes and the way they're built and the way they're lived in. And obviously back then they were talking about, you know, making sure there's a home office space and flex space and they're there. But I just saw something recently um, that went on to say, we were all like moving to these big, wide open, great room floor plans. Nobody wanted the formal living room, dining room, separate spaces anymore. And it's done a complete reverse. Oh, people true. don't want it so open because, you know, you could have two adults working from home. You could be homeschooling someone while someone's working and you need places, private places. You don't want the whole house to be open. And if everybody's in the kitchen, how do you get any work done? So the trend is, is kind of switching back um that's so know, funny i didn't think yeah, about that yeah and it is and and of course they're um you know everything's touchless technology right we had the water faucets and stuff like that but everybody's incorporating that in and all of the technology where your house is completely automated you can run it off your iphone or your ipad or something like that um but these air systems which i talked a little bit about um before that it's really important now that they're doing these amazing air filtration systems in your home so that the air is as clean as possible. And so there's so there's so many reasons why people are also building now because there's a lot of new technology that's incorporated into these homes. But I'll have to I have to tell you, the people, even if you're not in a new construction property, everyone has been able to easily update their homes to the latest technology. I just, we just uh, put something on the market and everything they've switched out to automated everything. You know, from their phone, they control the pool, the, the alarm, the air conditioning. Um, everything is done through Wi-Fi. And um, so it's just super cool to watch. Yeah. But I love the idea of the flow. You know, I really experienced a little bit of that, too. There was a funny meme going around um, on the Internet about the refrigerator. And I had to joke back that I always wanted a great room floor plan where everything was open, you tear down all the walls, everything's open. And I said, I can now see my refrigerator from every room in the house. And that's been a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the weight thing. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I understand where they want to, people want to back out of that now and find some more private spaces to. Uh, Absolutely. No, it's crazy how everything comes back eventually. It's just yeah. like, you know, I mean, high waisted pants, like that was an 80s thing. Now that's back, yeah. you know. Yeah open floor plans <laughs> they'll be back eventually but you know <laughs> i think it's exactly right that's a interesting way to look about it and just like those little things everything's like a domino effect that's going to affect what people want in the future it's such a fluid market you know things yeah. just kind of move along they go up and down with the news and they they move around with you know the current circumstances and it's just fun absolutely but, yeah well, I think that was a great little discussion that we just had. Thank you guys so much for like sharing your opinions about what's going on right now. Um, let's get into the, mar the, the market point where you guys talk about one of your listings that you guys have. Um, so that those of you guys who are watching, you guys get to see every week we do this portion where the realtors who are on here share a current listing that they have so that you guys can kind of see what's out there in the market and they always come with beautiful properties. So, um, if you want to, I believe, Katie, you were up first on the Market Update Monday. So if you want to start, I will highlight your screen. Oh, fantastic. I also want to make a point about Martin County that, you know, we have a ton of employers. We've got yeah. a lot of jobs here. Um, and they're, they're very high wage paying jobs. We have Martin Health System. Uh, we have um, manufacturing. Um, you know, we have banking. 
uh, we have trucking here um, and we have technology companies. So, and it's, it's continuing to grow. So uh, Martin County, not only is a great place to play, but it's also a great place to work. Absolutely. And we keep growing too. There's, um, there, Amazon just came to our area too, up in Port St. Lucie, oh. so. Yep, yep, yep. You know, Aeronautical. There's a lot, definitely. Absolutely. We have Cleveland Clinic here now, and there's a lot of hiring going on with that. Nice. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's we are we are growing. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. We can. Cool. So, surprise, surprise! Here we go again with 1061 Gardens Boulevard in Palm City. Yeah music there. Hey, we had a huge price adjustment. Now just $549.9. Very motivated sellers. We had two tremendous open houses this weekend. We had a ton of people back to back uh, through the property. Of course, you know, social distancing, you know, massive as needed. Uh, great property, uh, five plus bedrooms, three oversized three and a half car garage, there's RV parking, it has a pool, it has a tiki, metal roof, Kiwa style house, fantastic front and back area living spaces with an outdoor um, summer kitchen, uh, formal dining room, which you could turn into an office if you wanted to. Uh, there are two owner suites in this property, one upstairs, one downstairs. Uh, great for entertaining. There's a fire pit outside. You've got almost half an acre of land to run around and you could social distance and still party together. <laughs> uh, there, uh, so the, yes, there's a pool and it's kind of like a cocktail pool. It's not super deep. Uh, so it's uh, nice and safe for all the kiddos. And uh, upstairs there are uh, four bedrooms plus a large loft space. And again, this is an old Palm City. There is no HOA. So you can park any, and you can park and play all you want in this property. And it's right next to Jock Layton Park here in Palm City. As Sarah mentioned, we have uh, excellent schools in Martin County, Palm City specifically for their elementary schools. A lot of families moving to the area specifically for elementary schools in Palm City. And uh, yeah, so we've got uh, open houses happening every Saturday and Sunday until this thing is under contract. Um, so give us a call, 772-444-6989. The new, the new price is $549.9. Please Yay. bring us a buyer and get it sold. These are very motivated sellers. They have moved out. They're in their new property. And uh, it's time for this to go. Very motivated. Awesome. <laughs> so much, Lucy. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. All right. Very pretty. I love that house. I think it's beautiful. I do too. It's I really pretty. It. Sarah, want to buy it together? <laughs> Come see it and do a live. Do a live. Get people to come see it. Yeah, we have to do so that. Many, there's so many people that want to be able to keep their boats with them and RVs. Oh, it's such a huge trend right now to RV. You know, get mm -hmm. your RV and go across the country. It's Social the best distance. Travel. Social distancing. You've got a guaranteed hotel room. You can book, and you can park it. If you buy that house, you can have all your stuff with you. So that's great. And a garden. You can put your company it. come stay in the RV. <laughs> yeah. Just you could just like uh, what what is it? Um, you could do like an Airbnb for your RV. <laughs> yeah. Airbnb the house. Airbnb. Yeah. There you go. And then there you go. Yep. I love it. It's beautiful. It. All right. Let me go get that money real quick. Hold on. <laughs> okay, let's buy it. Yeah. We'll All it. right, Sarah, you are up. Okay. Hi there. Let's see if I can find my screen. Thought it was all ready to share. Hmm. Ah, I can't find my. I made myself a nice flyer to share with everyone today, and. Pop up. Oh, here we go. Show all windows. You're somewhere. Here we go. Okay, here we go. We have the most beautiful new townhome listing. Harbor Island is the section within Palm Cove Golf and Yacht Club. So you have all the amenities, the marina, ocean access, swimming, 
club, golf, tennis, all of it. Um, but we have a section called Harbor Island, and this is a cluster of 48 homes. Um, at the end of the street is access to our marina. Many of them run along Vesey Creek and have water views. This particular one has been completely redone inside. It is spectacular. The kitchen is to die for. I encourage you to check it out online and take the virtual tour of this property. Gorgeous, um, these gorgeous wood look floors, uh, amazing top of the line kitchen that has a lot of little secrets in there. There's a pull out bar area, just a really high end cabinetry, very pretty. This, what's really special about this townhome, it has its own private swimming pool. Imagine that, talk about turnkey, everything's taken care of. All you have to do is turn the key and come and go. And you even have your own swimming pool. This has been all updated. Um, new pool, new surfacing, everything in the house has been updated. New air conditioning, new water heater, new appliances. It's fabulous. It's on a cul-de-sac. It's very private. It is uh, just a stone's throw away from Bessie Creek. Um, you can actually, at, at the front of the property, see our marina and see the boats that are tied up back there. Has lovely views, pretty places to walk around um, the area. Again, you can step right on the dock here and go down to the main riverfront clubhouse from the top of the street um, and it's close to all the other amenities in Palm Cove. This one is a three bedroom plus an sorry about that. It's a three bedroom home plus an office. It has three and a half baths, a two car garage, a first floor master suite and it is just a little bit over 2,100 square feet under air. So we're very excited about this one. I encourage you to check it out online. Take the video tour. If you want carefully, carefree, easy living in a really nice community that has lots of amenities, and this is definitely the home for you. That is a beautiful kitchen. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in love with that. It has a big 10-foot built-in banquette on the front of the island. And wow. then this perfect dining table that's exactly the same length and wood tone as the island. You can seat about 12 people around this. It's really beautiful. And then if you flip around, 24-foot ceilings and wow. a big open floor plan here. And then... Of course, you have a master suite on the first floor and then two more beds, all on suite baths um, with an office on the second floor. And the second floor off the second master has a big walkout patio. It's all screened in with a screen enclosure. The patio is gorgeous upstairs. What a nice sitting area to have a glass of wine or a cup of coffee in the morning. So wow. it's it's really pretty. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. guys always come with those big guns, beautiful properties. I never thought that living in Palm Cove could be so diverse. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I've never considered Palm Cove, but you've got me thinking. That's what it's all about, guys. <laughs> That's awesome. Those are both beautiful, beautiful houses. I might have to come by and do a live on each of them. Yes. Yeah. yes. I'm in. For sure. All right. Well, as you guys have seen, do you guys have any announcements that you guys want to make before we end Market Update Monday this week? That we're open at 1061 Gardens Boulevard Saturday and Sunday, 11 to 3, Saturday and Sunday. Come see us. We'll come check it out. So that, that, yeah. that property, we'll, we'll show you anything, but come see us. <laughs> um, amazing. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Picking, letting me pick your brains a little bit about, you know, the real estate market right now and just like kind of what's going on with our area and getting those local, lo the local advice. I really appreciate you guys being on here. And like I've said to any, anybody who's watching this, we have both of both Sarah and Katie have been on Market Update Monday since the beginning um, when we started right when COVID, you know, started. So it's been a pleasure to really have you guys on and I look forward to seeing you guys each week and hearing what you guys have to say. So if you guys have any questions at all, both of their Facebook profiles are in the description of this video. Um, you can always watch the replay. If you're popping on right now, you can always watch the replay on our YouTube channel, Arrow Title Services. So check that out. Um, and we'll see you guys next week on Monday at 2 p.m. Thank you, Lucy. Have a great week. We'll you guys too. All right. Take I will see care. you guys next week. Thank you, Lucy. See you soon. Bye. Bye. See you, Katie. See ya. Bye, Sarah. Bye.